Welcome back to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Backerl D'Angelo, your host. Today we're going to get down and dirty and talk about version 3.5 of the Star Citizen Alpha Persistent Universe. So hold on to your hats. This is going to be kind of full featured and kind of long. So the first thing I want to talk about is the coolness of having a habitat that's your own. Where you place things, what you do in this habitat is all yours. You finally have privacy. You're probably not going to realize it until you start moving things around and come back a few times. But for those of you that haven't, well, guess what? It's your place, so where you put things, they will stay. And there's some good things and some bad things about that. And like all things Star Citizen, there are many bugs that come along with this. Here we go. We're just going to place this book right down on this countertop over here. Wait, maybe I should read it first. No, nah, we'll place it. And when I come back here, that's going to be there. I left this one. This one fell off the bookshelf before. I picked it up, tried to put it back on. I couldn't, so I placed it over here. Now I'm going to put it on what looks like my desk. And we've done it. But there are also many, many, many issues with this. And sometimes when you have some problems where something falls into another object, it's persistent. And that means that there's also persistence to the bugs inside of the game. And that has been a... That's been kind of bad for me because I'm walking around with a book underneath me. A book fell off the shelf. Well, two books did. One fell off and kind of attached itself to me. The other one fell off and I couldn't get it back on the shelf. So it, I put it on the desk. All right. Area 18. I am pretty amazed with the quality of Area 18. CIG has outdone themselves in this. I, I didn't think that it was going to be such a cool place to visit. I didn't think it was going to be as nice to visit. So cool and nice, two different things. Things could be cool, but not nice. And things could be nice, but not cool. But I kind of feel like I'm stepping into Blade Runner when I come in here or even maybe maybe even the fifth element but more blade runner because of that asian feel to it with a little bit of other um western culture influences in it and if you're looking at it it's got all this asian culture and a lot of the food is like chimichangas and tacos so i think they were thinking blade runner here because that was a very similar very similar um cajun mix of Asian and Western and Latin cultures. So here we are at the first place that you can find some food. They're not turning these on as in the game. There's no reason to eat yet. They do have the typical places to go. Oh, there's some hot dogs. And here's one of the shops, cassava. I wish there was a alternative to cassava because honestly, I hate their attire right now because it all looks the same. Obviously, they're all placeholders, so don't listen to me right now. But every jacket you try on looks the same. There was that book. I don't know if you picked it up. Back it up, and you could see it. So a lot of these different items weren't working for me. The kiosks just seemed to be down today. I don't know if they've worked for anybody else, but they just didn't work for me. All right, let's move on. Unlike Hurston, I don't have a problem taking off my mask here and uh, walking about. I just don't choke or anything and there's a lot of little nooks and crannies to area 18 kind of like it's still under development and these nooks and crannies all have construction equipment in it and garbage and all sorts of stuff that i would really question if that far in the future that's actually what you have going on in that area but lots of cool little places that you can go to, like this little newsstand over here where there's no interaction yet. You can't pick up a book yet, but all that will come in time. And here we can go and take on the role of our, well, here, it's our very own food court, you know, food cart. And obviously, um, we didn't 
have any way to interact with that either. So I'm sorry to make you all nauseous going around here in circles. There's a lot to see in Area 18, and what I would suggest is that you go out to Area 18 as soon as you can and check out all the little nooks and crannies around here because there's a lot of little Easter eggs. Like, if you could find the turtle, I want you to post a link so I can see it, and uh, I'll see what kind of hanger flare I could throw your way, <laughs> okay? We'll have a little mini contest with that. The turtle has been kind of tough for me to find. I think that everybody else has come through here and picked them up every time I want to get one and put one in my habitat. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, do some research and you'll find out. This is G-Lock. It's the bar that we had before when we were in Hangar 18. Um, all I'm going to tell you is that there are bugs galore in this iteration of Star Citizen 3.5. So when you sit down, you wind up somewhere else. And when you stand up, um, it's hit or miss on if you're going to land on the ground again. <laughs> I've been flying through space a couple of times, uh, falling, perpetually falling or falling forever and ever and ever and ever. So lots of bugs with sitting down in different places here. So we've got to see this wonderful place of Area 18. There's a lot more to see, but I think... It's something that you could all go and do on your own. So let's move along and see the next piece of this wonderful game. We're going to head off over to their metro transportation, which are flying buses. But before we do so, I want to see if I could do... Oh, there's that stupid book. Before we do so, let's stop and see if I could get my helmet on and get my armor on and get all ready to go take my ship out. I should really do this when I get there, but I've found myself forgetting and there's some ships that just aren't pressurized enough and I find myself choking in them because I get used to not having my clothes on. As you see, I'm populating all my armor. And um, I'm trying to decide at that point if I want to stay with the purple suit. I don't see anything telling me that it has indeed saved every time I click on save, so I was a little bit weary. And look, on the outside, there's the book. No armor, though. Let's just go. All right, so we're going to go to the right. You can go to the right or the left in this building. They both bring you to different... I, I guess you could call them different bus stops. I don't know what to call them. Different transit stops. That makes more sense. Whatever you do, don't stand all the way against the wall over there. You can get stuck. So we have... Oh, my Lord. We have less than 30 seconds to wait. That is the first time I've ever had that happen. Usually I get out here and I'm waiting for 180, 220 seconds. And uh, that is... I have to tell you, they build a lot of realism into the game, but some of that realism is kind of, uh, it's kind of so tedious, it makes it hard for me to say, yeah, I'm going to come home, I'm going to play the game for an hour, because it could take you 30 minutes to get out of your area, talk to your friends online, get to the bus, get the bus, you know, get, get to the bus, get on the bus, take it to the Space Force, get, get off the bus, Go up to your kiosk, get your ship, take off your ship, and finally get into space. That could be 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how long you talk to your friends when you log in. It's just crazy. But, you know, I understand about this realism, about losing yourself in this world. And it's very simple to lose yourself in this world. I mean, it is... Chris Roberts, it is Star Citizen. I'm still waiting for that content that's going to draw me in. That's going to make me go, oh my god, I've got to play this game every day, all day. But without, without any of those rich storylines that we've had in his past games, even in Privateer, which was kind of like this, the PU is kind of... Well... It is emergent gameplay, but you want to feel part of the environment, part of the storyline, part of what's going on. So there may not be a draw into the game when certain things just don't work. I've run a couple of cargo missions from Arcorp to Hurston, which is a 
pretty good deal of money, about seven grand a piece going back and forth. That's more than what we were getting in the past, or maybe it's not. You could do it in a very fast ship, like a 300. And what I find is that there's so many bugs that I just haven't been playing the game as much as I want to. But I also keep thinking to myself, without actually talking to a mission giver, without actually knowing why I'm doing this, I kind of just feel like I'm an American truck simulator or European truck simulator running boxes back and forth. It's the same thing with going out and doing bounty hunter missions and you know, the beacons, it's like, okay, great, but what have I actually done? What have I changed in the world? And all that's going to come far down the road. I didn't know the UEE had an arrow. Pretty cool. Nice, beautiful shots inside here. I remember the first couple of Star Citizens I did, I used to layer in the commercials that... CIG would do on top of the videos or the video screens inside the deluxe hangar. And I would let them play in the background as I was doing my video with no audio, of course. I was learning how to use motion back then and I learned how to pin video to different objects and that was pretty fun. I don't do things like that as much anymore because my videos are kind of uh, short and sweet or long and simple. All right, so we're getting up to the kiosk. See what I mean? It took us quite a bit of time to get here. I'm going to go and check out the rentals, which I do not think are in the game yet. Can I click on this guy? Yeah, I can. No, I should have read the uh, release notes. Rentals are not in the game right now. I just hit my uh, iPad and picked up the release notes and looked at it. So rentals aren't turned on that way. They're turned on inside the uh, arena commander right now. All right, um, I'm going to think about getting a different ship over here for a few seconds, but I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to go with, I love that arrow. Every time I look at the arrow, I've got to stop on it, and I've been using the 300 so much. I think I just need to go into, you know, the hurricane would be good, but if I get jumped, I need somebody in the turret. Valkyrie, been in that so much. Nope. Yeah, let's take a Knox. We'll take a motorcycle around. That would be good. Um, I do like... Well, yeah, Freelancer would be nice. But you know what? Let's let's take the Reliant Core. I don't have my Mako yet because I really just don't want to attribute the upgrade to it just yet. I want there to be more gameplay inside of the news reporter gameplay. I guess that's what it's going to be, right? Although that ship is pretty awesome, I love how the cameras work, and uh, recording isn't going to be too bad through those. I can't wait until there are major events like Operation Pitchfork that I could actually go and report on. That would be awesome. I hope one of my friends lets me put my Mako on their uh, Idris. Of course, I'll have to have my saber on one of them too, or something smaller, something like an arrow that I could do some damage in. All right, so Hangar 1. Here we go. All right, I'm going to skip ahead and bring you back in after I get on the ship. And there she is, my beautiful... Uh, you know, I was going to make fun of it, but I really do like the Reliant. I, I really want the landing gear to be able to be brought up without switching it into vertical mode, because in atmosphere, I feel like flying as a flying wing is much easier. And if there is a way to raise the landing gear without making the wings go and you know wings go into vertical position i'd love to know i think they're working on it though so maybe that's something that i just have to wait to come to pass so let's talk about the flight model as we get into this beautiful bird engines on flight ready no power on engines on i like doing it this way i've been playing so much x-plane i like i like starting up the aircraft the way i should and I like starting up my ships the way I should. It, it really does bring immersion into it. Here I am complaining about getting on a bus. But then I'm also complaining that there aren't enough buttons, knobs, switches, and levers to pull and push and turn. Oh, all right. Have I talked about how much I hate the flight model yet? All right, so 
the flight model. I, I broke my ship. I broke my ship. Let me just get out of here real quick. Oh my god. All right, we'll just point it up in the air. She is beautiful. And when I say she's beautiful, I'm talking about the workmanship on this. It's just amazing. I'm going to look in it and oogle at it a few times while I'm talking to you. The flight model. Non-intuitive. The flight model. Built for people that love arena, ca arena Commander. The flight model. A big mistake. All right. It's in its first iteration. Okay? I've got to give them some... i got to be lenient. I've cursed it. I've fell for it. And I've cursed it again. Sorry about all the lip pops and stuff here. I am annoyed and I am suffering from a lot of allergy crap right now. So the flight model, I understand that they want to make it seem more realistic and they want to make it seem more fun. I think what they're doing is they're building something for somebody that has a lot more skill and a lot more time to figure it out than the average star citizen. I'm good with it because I know over time as much as I complain about it I'm going to master it but it's still not intuitive. I'm just going to say it this way. We have fly-by-wire aircraft today that the aircraft determines what it has to do to make the maneuver that the pilot wants to you know that the pilot wants to perform. And that's exactly what the IFCS was in the beginning. But now we're taking away that, that, that mechanic that exists in today's fighter aircraft and putting back in a mechanic that's more like driving a boat than it is like flying a space fighter. I've got to worry about my speed limiter. I've got to worry about my speed. I've got to worry about my drift. I've got to worry about which angle I'm pointing in. There is way too much for the average person to do in here. And like I said, I will persevere. I will learn it and I will master it. But the average person isn't going to give it that much time. It's built specifically for the people that want that type of flight model. And I, I understand where Chris and CIG is coming from. They're trying to make combat fun. But there's more than just combat pilots in here and more than just amazingly awesome, incredibly um, fantastic fighter pilots. There's a huge number of people that just want to be in the game because it's a Chris Roberts game because it's a space game, because it's a trading game, because it's a space opera, whatever, whatever, right? But when they're making the flight model in this way, they're really starting to tailor it away from that low and mid-range person and just into that higher end person that's going to take the time and is going to struggle and get through the struggle and learn it and is going to be good at it or master it. And the flight model right now, I believe, is something that takes too many controls you're taking that away from the average person right so if somebody just wants to get a wingman extreme if somebody just wants to get a uh, t 16000 m just one of them you're taking away the opportunity for them to master that because it's tough to have that many buttons on just one device and maybe i've got all this wrong i've been wrong before and i admit when i'm wrong but I just don't see this being what we signed on for. It, it's kind of meh. And I want Star Citizen to be there for everybody, not just the people that are screaming for this type of flight model. So I don't know. Maybe there's a hybrid. Maybe there's an on-off switch for the flight model. I don't know. Maybe this grows on me. It's very possible a lot of things that I didn't think were going to grow on me in the game have grown on me. So I'm going to leave it there with the flight model. 
We're going to go and take a run to Lyra. Lyra is the first frozen world that we can go to, modeled after the frozen moons inside our solar system. I would say closest to Europa. I know there's a couple around Saturn also, but closest to Europa. Yeah, I would say that. And it's bright on the planet. But what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to get down to the surface, which is a lot easier now, much easier. And we're going to try to just take a look at what the surface is like, just by flying over it and looking left and right, and then land at this uh, facility, pick up our box, and run it over to Hurston. And on the way to Hurston, I'll talk about the last thing, which is DNA. All right, let's get down to the surface. So, all in all, Lyra reminds me of the poles on Yella. It really does. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yella is one of my favorite places to go because of the rings around it, although a moon would never have the gravity to keep a ring system for long, especially when in close proximity to other planets. To planets. Nonetheless, Yella is my favorite place to go in the star system at this point. But I... I really like Lyra. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. I think it's frozen. I think that there's going to be a lot of fun to have here. I didn't find much rock to mine when I was taking my Polaris here. My Polaris. My Prospector here. But, hmm, let's see. Yeah, I, I like it. I like this place, and I think that I can uh, find some really cool things to do here. It might not be the place that I set up my habitat or my little mini camp once we get those but it is at this particular point a pretty cool place to go to i'm really waiting for uh microtech that will be a nice area to go to i'm going outside because they still haven't mastered the whole landing of this aircraft you should have the thrusters go to one quarter strength as you're trying to land but i don't know what CIG is doing with landing at this point. I know that they do the auto lands when you get back to different places, but I I really think that when you go into landing mode, automatically those thrusters should go down to about a quarter. That way you could land nice and softly. There's probably something else I'm doing wrong. A couple of the reflections are coming through the ship, another bug, and it's just so bright. And this bug right here, is because of that stupid book that I can't get off my feet. I'm going to see if I can uh, delete my texture files inside my user folder and see if that helps me. Maybe that will just make things go away. I doubt it, but we can try it. So the whole missions in this game have been pretty, pretty standard. Go here, go there, bring this here, bring this there, go get that person, go save this person, go search that vessel. But there's more places to go. And I have to say that the more places that CIG put in the game, the less bored I am with the game. It's starting to break that monotony I was getting from going back and forth between Yella and Selen so much. And then when I got sick and tired of that, just going out to Daymar and driving around on the surface in one of my uh, cyclones or my, I keep on saying my links, but it's an Ursa because I didn't get my links yet. And I walk around this spaceship every time and I just look at it and go, they do make beautiful spaceship. They do. They make beautiful spaceships. All right, let's get back in here. There's that, uh, that, that, that reflections, the texturing coming through the outside. Let's just drop it. Just drop it. It will fix itself. There it goes. It fixed itself. Let's bring this up. And inside the ship. Oh, God. I love this part of it. So, we're all ready to go. Everything's situated. What the... All right. That's another thing. I don't know why it keeps lurching forward. My... Speed limiter was all, all the way down. My throttle was all the way back. There's no reason for that to happen. I wonder if that's just a bug right now or if I really do stink. All right, we're going to shoot up. We're going to go to Hurston, and we're going to talk about the DNA system on the way. 
So I've been waiting for the female model for a very long time. And it finally came. And it came with this system called DNA. Now I'm very happy about the female models. DNA was very intriguing and very cool for about the first three days. Until I realized that if they don't have exactly the right facial models in that game, you're never going to be able to arrive at the look that you want. Now, I should do some more research before I talk about this because I think maybe CIG is also going to have a tool that will let you brush in or change certain features after you've gotten your look directly without having a head model. But at this point, it's very difficult to get that look that... So I'm going to say it this way. Elite Dangerous has one of the best character model, um, character creators that I've seen. And I can get... I could spend hours in there and I can get the look that I want. I could spend days, three days, going in about an hour, hour and a half, the first two days, and maybe about 40 minutes the last day before I gave up. And I just couldn't get that look that I was looking for. It's very difficult. It's very, uh, it's very frustrating to use that system. And all I have to say is, I know it's early. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. I'm going to let them populate the database with more and more and more head models. But until they do that, just not going to be able to get the actual look that you're looking for. Now here's the second piece of this. They're using a DNA model where you can model yourself after three people of the same sex, right? And that kind of makes sense to somebody that's trying to create a character from looks that they like inside of different people. If they were really doing a DNA system, wouldn't they say, here's the mother, here's the father, create the child? I mean, that's what I keep on thinking. So you pick a really nice looking guy, a really hot looking girl, and you take the features that made those people, I mean, made those people beautiful. How many people walk up to someone's child and say, oh, she's so beautiful. She has your husband's eyes and she has your nose. Oh, look at those cheeks. They're so yours. Thank God she's got his chin. I mean, just make it more believable if you're going to say it's a DNA system, but also give us more options. It's the PU. They get a pass on this one. So that's all I'm going to say about the DNA system because there really isn't much to talk about as it is version 0.5, okay? It, it's like the first time that we have this system and it's the first bit of feedback that they are getting from the citizens at large. So as we citizens, as we backers start to use the DNA system more and more, we need to make sure that we're providing feedback through the tools that they give us making posts online and going into, well, I don't want to make it bug reporting because I haven't found any bugs in the system yet, except for faces not showing up sometimes when you click on them to bring them into the trio of faces that you can create your image from. But, you know, it, it works as intended, knock wood, because that's what they intended, but there just needs to be a lot more variety so we can see if it actually is going to let us make that character that we envision. Leave it to me to get to Hurston in the middle of the night, or I should say just at dusk. I mean, it's beautiful outside. I wonder if it's dawn. I can't tell if I'm going left, right, up, down, front, center, sideways, or around and round. A coordinate system really needs to be in the game, and I know they talked about this, but come on. It's been how many years? You could have been thinking about this from the day you started the game. There always needed to be a coordinate system, and we need to have it. And however you're going to make it, one big giant coordinate system that covers the whole universe, 
or one for each planet and one for each planetary system and one for the galaxy, whatever it is, get it done because I want to be able to know where I am and how I'm getting to where I want to be. <laughs> okay, I'm done with that. But Hurston, this brown smog or reddish brown smog, it's, it's so depressing. <laughs> and I came from a planet that was all city to a planet that is, well, dead, pretty much, except for a couple of cities. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit, bleh. <laughs> but all I have to say is that even with how disgusting this area is, they've done a great job. So I am, I've been very impressed in some ways. I'm feeling that I'm left wanting in other ways with 3.5. There's some things coming down the pipe that I'm really excited about. I'm going to say the first and foremost is my Carrick, which will be here by the end of the year, I hope, knock wood. But I'm also ex excited about the advent of being able to have the ability to change the look of my ship, personalizing my ship. They gave me the ability to have a persistent, a persistent habitat, and now they're going to give me the ability to change the look and feel of my ship. So I have two things that I could call my own in the Star Citizen universe. And these are things that I'm excited about that are going to make me want to come back for more. Fix a couple of the other things I talked about today and I'll be excited to play the game again. I'm more excited about the future than I am about the present right now, but that doesn't mean that I don't see the hard work, I don't see the strides that CIG has made. This is turning out to be the best damn flight simulator ever, just like they said it was going to be. But that doesn't mean that we're going to get all the fun and great things at once. It means that patience is gonna, well, we're gonna need patience to endure the journey for Star Citizen to be built. And that's one of the things that uh, I find sometimes I forget that it is a journey, that it is a development process, and it's not that one particular patch is gonna suddenly make the game amazing and fun to play. It's actually a combination of patches that are going to be introduced over time that are going to make it fun to play. And here we are finally down on Hurston. Not a moon, but Hurston itself. And we're going to make sure that we leave our mask on because I believe we're in one of those toxic areas. So we're going to just come over here. We're going to open the door first because they are, of course, having a little bit of bugs with the way that you carry this thing. It's carrying it up way too high. And for me, this is one of the breaking moments of the game because it means that you can't always see where you want to place it down. They should make the box go invisible when you're trying to place it down. That way you can point out a place on a counter without having to look around the box, through the box, put the box down, try it again so many different ways. You're going to see it as I try to put it in, well, I don't know who I have to give this to right now. I might have to put it into a machine or I might have to give it to a person. I guess I should have read that. Well, just because we're always putting it in one of the Kovalex boxes, let's just go over here and see if we can put it in that box. And this is what I'm talking about. There's the box going up. I have to put it down on the ground and then pick it back up again, which is good. In the past, if you did that, you would fail the mission. And then let's just put it inside there. Oh, there it goes again. That's what I'm talking about. Dropping this thing multiple times. Let's go to place and get it in there. I saw the green area of it, and it's in. Are we going to get credit? And... We're waiting, we're waiting, come on. Yes, we got credit. All right, folks, that's my thoughts on 3.5 for now. I'm going to do many videos, like I said. Now that I'm not frustrated with crashes of the PTU, I'm pretty happy. And uh, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you are a subscriber, be sure to click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I will talk to you soon. Bye.